smiling faces. Woo! Woo so I want to introduce the wonderful and lovely, before I start though, everybody needs to please shut off anything that makes noise. <laughs> For your cell phone, iPad, I don't think we have beepers or anything, that's kind of 1980 stuff. But please shut off everything not to, that doesn't make, that makes noise, including this too. <laughs> And I want to introduce our Northeast Division Governor, Kathy Stroh. Welcome everybody. Thank you for coming to the Northeast contest. And uh, we're looking forward to a really uh, exciting contest. <coughs> I wanted to open with an uh, inspirational quote. So what I, I found is, criticize me when you're at my level. Meanwhile, admire me. And I think it's so appropriate for what we're doing here. I admire all these contestants so much for what they've done. And even to get to this point, they've competed at the club level and the area level. So they really have known what the, the competition is like. And I'm also thanking all the functionaries who are here. And they have a really important role too, so they're, they're, they're stretching ourselves. And with the theme of our, our uh, district to stretch, and this, these competitions are no better chance for them to be able to do that. So again, I'm leaving you with that. Crit crit criticize me when you reach my level. Meanwhile, admire me. So I guess I saw Prez, so Prez can criticize. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so with that, I want to call up our Toastmaster for the, for the uh, contest. So our Toastmaster is Brad Belmore. <coughs> He's an advanced communicator bowl, advanced leader bronze. He's the immediate past president of the CVS Caremark Toastmasters and is the current reigning District 30 humorous speech champion, contest champion. He lives far, far away in the northwest suburbs, Woodstock, I believe. He has a beautiful wife, Two beautiful daughters and two really ugly cars. <laughs> so we're starting out in university. And I just want to reiterate what Barb said about turning off devices. I was in a contest last year where somebody's phone went off while somebody was giving an evaluation. It was very disruptive. So please turn them off. If you don't, you're going to go to hell for that. <laughs> <laughs> so we're having two contests today. A humorous speech contest and an evaluation contest. The evaluation is going to go first. We'll have a break. And then after the break, we'll have our humorous speech contest. Before we get too far, I need to recognize our dignitaries. We've got quite a few people here that hold offices for Toastmasters. Beginning with our district governor, Donna Weston, who is DTL. Donna, thank you. Our lieutenant governor, education and training, Ethel Goatee. Thank you. Our administrative chair, Don Williams, DTM. Governor, Rhea John. 
kind of have, you have to guess with all those E's, those are all the areas that this division is representing. The area governors here. So, on to our contests. The first kind of contest is going to be the evaluation contest, as I said. The contestants, the ballot counters, the timers, sergeant arms, everybody's going to brief prior to the meeting, so everybody knows what's going to be happening. Do I understand the Toastmasters International rules for the contest? And we ask that no one should enter or leave the room during the contest for the presentation. So, if somebody's on stage, please stay seated. You may do so at the time in between, if that if there permits, there's a minute in between for the judges to do some work. You can use that time to leave the room if you absolutely have to. But with those rules in place, let's let the contest begin. <laughs> the order of our speakers or our evaluators for the contest today. Contestant number one is Tamison Ford. Tamison Ford is contestant number one. Contestant number two is Mark Lebrin. Mark Lebrin is contestant number two. Contestant number three is Ben Sanders. Ben Sanders, contestant number three. Contestant number four is Murad Shah. Murad Shah is contestant number four. Contestant number five is Jeff Stein. Jeff Stein, contestant number four, five. Contestant number six is Deb Martin. Deb Martin is contestant number six. <coughs> so evaluations will be performed in that order, but in order for them to give an evaluation, they need to have a speaker to evaluate. Today, our speaker is Simone Warburton a speech entitled, What Do You Say to Your Money? What Do You Say to Your Money? by Simone Warburg. Good morning, everyone, fellow Toastmasters, members, and guests. I'll be speaking to you today about what you say to your money. What do you say to your money? Do you talk to your money? We know it doesn't talk back to you, but do you talk to your money? Does it do what, it tell, what you tell it to do? Do you tell your money that you are going to allow me to enjoy my appetite? I'll be able to enjoy the best cuisine. I'll be able to go to the, rest, the finest restaurants and just enjoy my money that way? Or do you tell your money that it's going to give you peace of mind? Peace so that I can relax, I can enjoy the finest things, I can go on vacations, trips, and just enjoy the benefits of money that way? Or do you tell it that you're going to save, I'm going to keep you, and I'm going to save you for things like retirement, having a healthy nest egg. Well, taken back about 20 years ago, I told my money that it was going to make me able to retire at about 40 years old. Little did I know that was not a realistic goal. I don't see that happening anytime soon. And Looking back at my, looking at my mom now, who's a retired nurse, she, her famous statement is, I have no money. What did she tell her money to do all these years? Now, I'm going to give you some statistics about money. Money for most people today. Most people don't talk to their money very much. They are afraid of that six-letter word, budget. Most people don't use, like to use that word. I found in my research that 70% of Americans, they do not have a budget. And what a budget consists of is basically a list of things that you expect 
to use your money with for that month. Typically, a budget consists of food, housing, entertainment, transportation, debts, utilities, educational costs, insurance, and child care. But 70% of Americans don't have that. There's a poll that I found on Pergola from 2013 that only shows that about 32% of Americans put a budget together on a monthly basis. Instead, we tell our money to do other things. There are about 10 things that I found that most Americans find to do to waste their money on, essentially. They start with credit card interest or deal websites. You're finding the best deal that you could, you just have to have that gadget right away. We also spend our money on appetizers. Before a meal, let's have a little appetizer, an extra six, seven bucks before the meal gets started. We also spend our money on ATM fees. Two bucks here or there, dollar fifty, depending on your bank. Overdraft. You didn't plan for what you thought that gadget would cause, and so therefore you're overdrawn. We have also speedy shipping. There's something that we need. We have to have it now. And therefore, we pay for that speedy shipping. And of course, designer baby clothes. <laughs> Our babies have to be cute. I know I have to rear my own, so we like them to look well. We want the top of the line. And then, unused gym memberships. <laughs> and premium cable. The top 400 channels that you might need, of which you use about four, watch about four. And then your daily coffee trips. That latte that we need. <clears throat> According to a bureau, the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the average American family spends about half of their monthly income on housing. The recommend, they recommend, I found some recommended numbers where, where they're suggesting that you spend about 25 to 35% of your money on housing, and then five to 10% of your money on utilities, another 5 to 10% of your money on food, 10 to 15% on transportation and charitable gifts, 5 to 10% on health, and 5 to 10% on recreation. And then 5 to 10% on that debt that we racked up for all those other 10 things that we waste our money on. And then 5 to 10% on savings, and personal needs. Now, on savings, we circle back on savings, most financial planners uh, suggest that you save more of a, the, along the lines of 10% uh, to 15% of your money. Especially for retirement, they're suggesting that you start saving 10 to 15%, especially when you're in your 20s. <coughs> So the general rule is to try to put away as much money as you can for savings so that you don't have to rack up those expenses that we talked about, the overdraft fees and the things that you cannot afford, the interest and the bank overdraw. So my suggestion today is to just talk about that six letter word a little bit more with your money tell your money what you're needing it to do, where you'd like it to go, and especially money that you want to save, put away for savings for those unexpected emergencies that may come up. We're not saying that you cannot have that latte, maybe once a week or every other day, but save some of your money and incorporate a budget in your money discussions. Thank you.
We'll now give our speech evaluation contestants five minutes to complete their evaluations. Our Sergeant at Arms, can you please escort the contestants out of the room and time five minutes for them, uh, beginning when they are seated in that room. When five minutes are over, escort the first contestant back to the room. We'll ask our, also ask our members here to keep five minutes for us. Evaluation contestants uh, complete their evaluations. Let's get to know our target speaker a little bit better. So, Simone, can you come back up here so I can interview you for a little bit? Just a brief announcement that these uh, proceedings will be taped for posterity's sake. There will be private links made available uh, probably tonight after the contests. 
after the last division contest is aired tomorrow. These will all be made public. Certain people have chosen to opt out. They will not be included in those public performances. You can access these videos at my website, www.timsvideo.com. We expect to have everything posted by Tuesday. And thank you very much, sir. And uh, I was provided some forms just before we started. Yes. Do you need those forms? Uh, I will need those to hold in posterity for releases for the contestants. Okay. So if the contestants can see me during the break, I can pass those forms out to you and make sure you have them. So you can... And again, if you're opting out, let me at least see you so I can make sure that you're not photographed or taped or included. Speak to me, speak to him. Thank you. We are ready to hear from our evaluation contestants. There will be one minute of silence between each contestant. So as they finish, we'll have one minute of silence so the judges can do what they need to do. Timekeepers will ask you to keep that minute for me. After the contestants have spoken, the judges will be given all the time that they need to complete their ballots for the contest. We'll now begin the speech evaluation contest. Tannison Ford. This is the evaluation contestant number one. Contestant number one, Candace and Ford. Mr. Toastmaster, honored dignitaries and judges, fellow Toastmasters, and welcome guests. And Simone, can you put your hand up for me? Great, all right. This is wonderful. You're sitting at the back, so you'll force me to project. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you say to your money? I think that you gave us a great speech today about a subject that we all need to struggle with. None of us ever seem to have enough money, and thinking through how to use it is a part of our daily lives and something everyone can relate to. So you instantly have the audience relating with you. What I'd like to do today is admire before I criticize. Taking a note from our, uh, from our district governor, division governor, sorry. So first of all, there were a few things that I loved about your speech. Your voice, it was strong, it was well paced. You used pauses on a frequent basis. No difficulty at all understanding it. And because of that, it was a barrier removed. We could just immerse ourselves in the content. You were content rich and well researched. There were a lot of facts in there and it was very thorough and comprehensive when you went through the different categories in budgeting, for example. And finally, you used humor. And it's ironic because next comes the humorous speech competition. You used humor to connect with your audience. And particularly, you could hear as you went through, you got a couple chuckles and then a couple more. And then when you had the whole room with you chuckling, I thought, she's got him. She's got him in the palm of her hand. She can land this point now. And you had a point. You had a purpose to your speech and something that you wanted to give, um, to give us to come away with. So I think my first suggestion for you is think about the different ways to connect. You can connect with your mind, you can con which you did. You can connect with, with humor, which you did. But you can also connect with the heart and the emotions. And you had the perfect tool for that, and you could have used it more. You started with the story of your mom, right? Now, what I would have liked is to feel some of the tension, anxiety, fear that we all feel about money and the story of your mom, and then project the hope at the end so we have that catharsis, that release. And I think that you would have found that on top of everything else you did, that would make the speech that much more powerful. 
The second thing that I want you to do, and this is um, really just an evolution as a speaker, I need you to take more risks with your beginnings and endings. You are very, very standard. Nothing wrong with that. A great place to start. But even just flipping your beginning. So you start with the questions, set yourself up, connect with the audience, and then switch over to the acknowledgement of the people in the room. Thank you so much for your speech. I hope you continue to speak, and I look forward to hearing you in the future. Our next contestant is Mark Leverin. Mark Leverin, second contestant. Fellow Toastmasters and honored guests, and especially Simone, her speech was titled, How to Talk to Your Money. And right off the bat, I think she did an excellent job using a metaphor to describe a budget because she told us the scary word, budget strikes fear into your shopping hearts. But how to talk to your money is a little more friendly, which brings me to another thing, her personability. We don't want people telling us how to spend our money, but when someone nicely and using nice metaphors explains to us about how to make a budget and talk to your money, it's a little more easy to get into and pay attention to different points. What I also really liked about her speech was how she was personable, as I mentioned, of course, and how she used the uh, metaphor uh, for how to talk to your money and how to make a budget. Uh, I also think that she raised a couple of really good points. The statistics are, of course, very useful as a persuasive mechanism to help us understand how we can better form a budget. But statistics can be dry. It can wear out your audience. You'll just be sitting there listening, like, oh, yeah, okay. But she didn't just use statistics. She also brought a personal experience, referring to her retired nurse mother, who asked, where's my money? I don't have any money left. To make us think in the future about how our monetary decisions now can affect us in the future. So that kept the speech fresh and enjoyable by using personal experience and statistics to make her point, which I really enjoy. With every enjoyable speech, there's always room for, for improvement for all of us. And there's a couple things I'd like to bring up here. One is the movement that Simone had. When you're right at the podium, it's very static, and everyone's kind of looking in one place, and when you move around, you can keep the setting fresh. You can keep them tracking you, it holds people's attentions, and it makes the speech more engaging. Another thing that I would uh, just caution about is volume. I was in the middle, and I heard Simone quite well, but when you get an even larger room, she did a good job of filling this one, and it's something to watch out for, to be careful that people in the back can hear you. Another thing that I'd like to cover in Simone's speech was organization. In the introduction, I loved how she pulled us in with that metaphor that made the speech seem a little more or less dry and budgety, but it would have been a little more clear if I could understand, in this speech, I'm going to persuade you and help you form a budget. And when you're using the points and the statistics and the personal experiences, help lead us to the conclusion that we should all budget. And lastly, the conclusion, I think she did a great job with that one, because she summarized it, guys, this is what you've got to do, you've got to make a budget. And that was very effective. 
Lastly, when you uh, are up at the podium, you can also get to use your notes. And as you continue to use your speeches, just work on using less and less notes, which will allow you to use more hand gestures. But all in all, it was a great speech. I love how she turned budgeting into an enjoyable topic for all of us to listen to. Thank you very much, Simone. We'll now have a moment of silence so the judges can work on their ballots. Cameras, let me know what that minute is on, please. Thank you, drivers. Our next contestant, Ben Sanders, is contestant number three. Contestant number three, Ben Sanders. <laughs> Fellow Toastmasters, distinguished guests, dignitaries, friends. Especially Simone's. What a great speech. What a great speech to share with us because it's one of those questions we all ask ourselves and we ask our money. We talk to our money all the time. We do that. But when we're talking to our money, there's questions we have to ask, such as, honey, how do we save you? I know you want to go. I know you want to fly away. You want to do your thing. But we need to keep you because we have things that we want to do in life, that we want to retire. And thank you for opening our eyes and sharing that with us. I really appreciate it. And the way you did it, with <coughs> voice inflection, you had your note cards there, but you made eye contact with us at various times. You also I'm just waiting for you in the future. I admire you because you're going to bust out from behind that podium one of these days, and you're going to get out here, and you're going to start making your movements with purpose and sharing your story because that's what you did with us. She shared her story. She told us how she talks to her mom. And then she went from there to share with us some statistics on some of the things that people do that, well, get them into a little bit of trouble. But the most important part in your story and in what you shared with us was how you shared with us your tips, your tips on how to save money. Now with the organization of that, I probably would recommend start out with the stats, get to the tips at the end and give those to us because that's what we're here to, here to absorb and, to, and to, to, to get out of the speech is those tips. What are you, you going to tell me? How am I going to? save that mind. But you gave them to us. You did all these things beautifully. And I know that because this is uh, an evaluation contest and you are a target speaker, that you're still fairly new to Toastmasters. And I admire you. I admire you for having the courage to come up here as a new Toastmaster and do this. Because it's not easy. But you know the reason you can do that? Because this is a comfortable environment. This is a safe environment. This is a place where you can do that, where you can get the evaluations, where you can express yourself. And again, I can't tell you how much I admire you for doing that. A couple of things that I will share with you once you get out from behind that podium, and I know you want to do it, is use your hands. Do some movements with purpose. You know, you, I saw you start to count off some of the tips. That was excellent. But when you're talking to your money, like I did, Take that money out. Use a prop. 
talk to that money, share with that money, you know, how you're going to save it, things like that. Those are just little things that are going to take you from being a good speaker to a great speaker to an exceptional speaker. Simone, thank you. Everyone, thank you very much. I can't wait to see you be that exceptional speaker that you are. Thank you. Okay. Our next contestant is Murad Shah, contestant number four, Murad Shah. Madam Contest Chair, fellow Ghostmasters, and especially Simone. Simone, you gave us a very powerful speech about how to handle money, how to deal with money. What is your money telling you? Or what are you telling your money? And the way you did it was you went through your own personal example, your mother's example, and you talked about what it would do for you had you saved it a little more all the way in the beginning. You went through a very detailed list of Bureau of Labor and Statistics on recommended categories of how much money people should be spending on. Everything you did was very powerful. You stood behind the podium and you told us through very detailed notes. What would I have done differently? I would have made it a little more personal. I would have come out of the podium. Do you know where your money is going every single day? Do you know if it's doing what you want it to do for you? Do you know if this is what you want it to do? Do you want, to make, do you want it to make you happy today? Or do you, want to make, do you want it to make you happy tomorrow? Every time you spend money, you need to be thinking, it's making me happy right now. Is this the time I want to be happy today? Or do I want to be happy tomorrow? If I'm happy today, will it, be, will it give me the satisfaction I want it now? Or later? Make it a little more personal. The other thing I would have done is exactly as I demonstrated, as opposed to standing behind the podium, if you would have come out, spoken to this group of audience. Now is the time for you to think about your money. Do you know what it's doing for you? Is it what you want it to do? That would have made it very real for everyone. All in all, you delivered a very powerful message for all of us, something for us to think about, a very strong beginning, a solid body with a lot of body movement around the stage using the entire platform you have available, and a very powerful end. Next time you are about to spend your dollar, think now or later. This is
Thank you, timers. Our next contestant, Jeff Stein, contestant number five. Contestant number five, Jeff Stein. where there's all those barbarians, Vikings, with big swords and all kinds of stuff, and they're running at him, and he pulls out that card, and they're like, oh, and then they walk away. I don't have that card. <laughs> and thankfully, thanks to Simone, I can learn what to do about it. My fellow Toastmasters guess, and obviously Simone, what do I do with my money? Nachos. And lots and lots of nachos. <laughs> Gotta be honest with you. Well, I mean, look at me. Can you blame me? But, as you can see, I have a problem with my money, and my guess is all of you do as well. So what I want to do is make sure that you have a great basis to give this speech again in the future, as well as talk about the great things you did, and just, you know, tell you how you can make sure that I don't spend any more money on nachos. Alright? So let's start with the beginning. The first thing I want to do is commend you for getting up on this stage. Being up here with your notes, I can tell you weren't ready. But you know what's important? You got up here and you did it. Sometimes the most important step is the first one. The one about getting up there, being up there, and doing it. You were comfortable. You didn't have any problems in terms of filler words, there were no ums, there were no ahs, because you were able to get up there and do it. You had great opening. You talked about questions. And in those questions, you got us engaged. We asked the questions about what we thought about our money and how we spent it. And as you can guess, I spent it on advertisers. Which, speaking of which, was one of your bigger laughs. You talked a lot about certain things that would give people laughs. Like, for example, the gym membership, where everybody groaned. Everybody in this audience groaned. Okay? You, the budget line was wonderful. It really was strong, and people felt that. And it was a good use to get us comfortable with you and want to hear what you have to say. Now, in order for you to get better, we need to work on this speech a little bit. The first thing I want to talk about is when you're using note cards like that. A lot of people are going to tell you, don't be behind this podium. Don't worry about that. If you need to use the podium, you use the podium. But when you're looking at your note cards, take that pause. Read the note card. Then go and speak. Take that next pause and read the note card and then speak. That way it doesn't feel like you're reading through the note cards and it will make you feel less nervous as well. Now, the structure I was a little lost about. I wasn't clear what exactly a call of action was to do here. I know I want to talk to my money, and you mentioned at the end about budgeting, but really in reality, I felt like we needed a strong mission statement right after that intro. Two sentences that tell us what you want to do and where you're going to go. And as a result, some of the transitions that you had were not as strong, and they could have been stronger. You could have basically sat there and said, okay, we're going to go from this point to the next point, talking about, because the statistics were great, but that lack of call to action didn't tell me what I needed to do and where I needed to go and what we needed to do to make sure we spent less money. So if you'll forgive me, as, I, as you can see, I ought to go get more nachos or figure out a way around this, but you were great and keep going. silent while the judges finish up their ballot. They have as much time as they need to do so.
All the ballots have been collected. I just have to say the longest minutes I've ever experienced is that minute of standing here doing nothing while waiting for the... <laughs> There's never a minute faster than the one between the yellow light and the red light. There's not a minute longer than the one you're waiting for the judges. So while we're waiting for our votes to be counted, we'll hear from Lydia Sawyer. She's going to give us some uh, exciting details of the upcoming District 30 contest. Her conference. <laughs> Fellow Toastmasters and guests, are you ready to stretch? Yes! <laughs> ready to take your speech to the next level? Yes! Yes! yes. yes. The District 12 Conference is November 15th. Please save the date. November 15th. It will be held at the William Tell Holiday Inn. Now what I usually do is ask the audience to participate with me. I will say Holiday Inn and you will say <coughs> twice. William Tell, William Tell. Let's try it. <laughs> Holiday Inn? William Tell, William Tell. Woo, you got it. One more time. Holiday Inn? William Tell, William Tell. Yes, that's where the fall conference will be. So the winners, the first place winners, will advance on to the fall conference. We will kick it off with the Achievers Breakfast at 7 o'clock. How many of you are working on your CC, CL, HLPs? Woo! You will be recognized with a breakfast. District 30 will give you a free breakfast that you earn for completing one of those awards. Next, it will be the banner parade. Are you excited about your club? Yes. 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 Show your pride. The banner parade. Next will be the contest. The evaluation contest will begin at 9 o'clock. Then we will progress to the business meeting. How many of you are presidents? Vice Presidents, anybody? Thank you for your leadership. You are invited to attend the business meeting. Next, we will have educational sessions and lunch with the keynote, Joan Moore. Pick up your wires out there. She will keynote the lunch. <coughs> then we will have a red carpet where you get to strut. If you have achieved or your club has earned an award, you will get to participate in the red carpet ceremony. And then we will have the humorous contest at 4 o'clock. Then we will have our Johnny Campbell. He will be the keynote. And then how many of you are working on your DTMs? Any DTMs? Well, you can do it. I see one person. We will have a ceremony for the DTM. So we invite you November 15th to come out to the Holiday Inn. Where is it? Oh, that was slow. One more time, where are we going to be? Holiday Inn? William Tell, William Tell. Tell. Miss the contest, man. <coughs> oh, that's just ask, Where is the William Tell Holiday Inn? It is okay. in Countryside, Illinois. Yes, thank you, Madam oh, District yeah. Governor. Yeah. Another how, much, one. how much is registration? $99 until October 31st. That's club registration. Club, yes, club registration. Club registration. Club Entire registration club. is nine. That, that that fits into Simone's budget. Budget. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any other questions? There will be lunch and dinner. So go online to District 30 for more details. Thank you. And I'd like to say that last year's conference, I was actually contestant in the humor speech contest, but everything in that contest was so good that I had to hurry back into the room after they got the mic off me, because I didn't want to miss the person after me. Right. Um, it was a good solid hour and a half of, of great entertainment. So if you can, everything else is going to be awesome, just the way you put it together. <laughs> but you're going you're gonna to really enjoy, you're going to get your money's worth out of that hour and a half of the humorous contest there. With that. We're going to take our 10-minute break. So before everybody leaves the room, if anybody needs to see me or our videographer for the release, please do so. If you use your cell phones, turn them off and you come back in, I'll remind you after the okay. 